Hi, in this video you'll see how to get started with Bluepill Inside products. Today I'll use a PTC Pro, but the procedure is the same for all Bluepill Inside products. First, a word on network requirements. Bluepill products are network based and leave the factory with IP set to DHCP. For this reason, we recommend you have a DHCP server in your network for initial setup. After this, you're free to use a static IP address instead. Also, internet access is needed when downloading software updates and device cores. And finally, Bluepill must be in the same IP range as the devices it's controlling, and the cameras, video switches, and so on must have static IP addresses in order to connect to them. All right, let's move on. Setup has four steps. Step one, connect. Start by connecting an ethernet cable from your switch to the controller. All our products can be powered by power over ethernet or a 12 volt power supply. For simple cabling, we're using PoE here. The device takes around half a minute to boot up. Towards the end of this, you'll see the buttons flashing. We expect you to have a DHCP server in your network for initial setup. It will provide an IP address for the device, which is shown in the display. If you do not have a DHCP server and do not see an IP address in the display, then please watch our video How to Access Blue Pill Without DHCP. You'll find a link to this video in the description below. Here we do see the IP address and are ready to move on. Step 2. Go to IP address. Blue Pill Inside products are fully self-contained during normal operation. You only need a web browser on your computer, tablet or smartphone when you update software or make changes to the configuration. Here I'll use Safari on a Mac. Enter the IP address shown on the controller in the address field and hit enter. This will take you to the built-in web server included in all Bluepill devices. First, you're presented with the login screen. Enter username admin and password skahoy, all in lowercase letters, and click sign in. Since it's our first time here, we are given the option to take a guided tour of the home tab. I encourage you to do this, but for now I'll click skip this time. Now we see Reactor, the configuration manager for Blue Pill. This is a good time to visit the settings tab. Here you can update the system software, set a static IP address, and disable the login screen if you so wish. You should also visit the Packages tab, where you update the key software components, Hardware Manager, System Manager and Reactor. But more on that in other videos. Right now we'll return to the Home tab and continue the setup. Step 3. Add Devices. Bluepill products can control a wide range of third-party devices such as cameras, video switches, audio mixers and much more. They can even control multiple devices from different brands simultaneously. This is done using device cores, which are software plugins that have all commands for a particular device. We have made a lot of device cores. You can see a list at devices.skahoy.com. When adding a new device, the device core is automatically downloaded from our server if you have internet access. If you are on a closed network without internet access, you can download device cores in advance to a computer and manually install them. This is covered in another video. Ok, let's look at the Home tab. In the right side of the screen, click Add Device. By default, Reactor will also discover devices on your network if it can. After a bit, you'll see an ATEM video switcher and a Canon CRN300 camera. Click select to add the CRN300 camera. Now you see the device settings window. Notice the device core is being downloaded and installed. 
and after this you see the devices connected. Since it was auto discovered, the IP address is also shown. The camera is now part of the project and ready to be controlled. Let's add another device. Click Add Device, but this time we click Add Device manually. This allows you to choose from the list of supported devices. I'll type UE70 to filter the list and select the Panasonic UE70 camera. Again, the device core is downloaded, but the device is still unconnected because we need to enter its IP address. I'll type the address and click Save. Now you see it gets connected. With this we have added two devices from different brands to our project. Step 4. Choose configuration. The only thing missing now is assigning commands to the buttons and knobs on the controller. A fast way to get started is by selecting one of our default configurations. They make it easy to manage devices and pre-populate commands on the panel. Open the configuration menu next to the panel. Here you can select to have no configuration or one of the default configurations or to make your own custom configuration. We'll choose the default configuration PTC Pro Generic PTC Control. By choosing this configuration, we now see a camera slot. Click the Add Camera button, click From Collection and select the Canon CRN300 camera. You see the camera is instantly added to the panel and now we have full control of both PTC movement, presets and a range of parameters. Click the next Add Camera button and select the Panasonic UE70 camera. It's added to the second button on the panel and we can now switch between cameras and have full control over both, even though they are different brands. You can change the sort order by simply dragging the camera icons. In many configurations it's possible to tweak settings directly on the Home tab. Here it's done with the camera selector, tally forwarding and routing trigger sections, making it easy to integrate a video switcher. You can also open the configuration tab where you have full access to edit everything and even make your own configuration from scratch. More on this in other videos. This concludes the initial setup. Please watch our other how-to videos on reactor setup and configuration. You'll find links to these below. Thank you for watching.